Hi, this is George Cow, and I'm here with Tamara Offeroff, one of the members of my Master Heart group coaching program. And she's going to be sharing with you some of the lessons she's learned in uh, growing her therapy and uh, mentoring practice and retreats business as well. Uh, hi, Tamara. Good to have you here. Hi, George. Yeah, it's lovely to be here. I feel privileged to be talking with you. Yeah, I'm thanks. Being recorded now. Thanks for being. Uh, thanks for being here. So I will read out your bio tomorrow, so that uh, everybody has some context of what you do, and then we'll go into the lessons you're learning in your business, and then we'll also talk about um, the work that you do with clients and with groups, uh, particularly dream work. So we'll 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 get into that uh, in a moment. So Tamara, here's Tamara's bio. Tamara has over 40 years of experience in the field of personal development spiritual guidance, transpersonal psychotherapy, dream work, body work, art therapy, the work of Byron Katie. Uh, and she works a lot with uh, fear and anxiety. And uh, uh, she works with groups, large and small, and, and does process-oriented psychology, a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of different areas. She trains and supervises both students and experienced psychotherapists. Wonderful. So, Tamara, one of the lessons that you've been learning, integrating in your business journey is this idea of, of being genuine. Uh, talk about that. What does that mean? How is that different from maybe how some people are taught to do business? Yeah, share with us here. Uh, I've experienced and tasted a number of uh, different modes of um, teaching and training uh, online. Um, and a lot of the people who try and sell stuff, uh, whether it's their personal services or whether it's a training um, about how to use various technology and so on, they come across as selling. They're, they're very, um, it always feels like I'm being led down a, a, a slippery slope to forking out a hell of a lot of money. Um, and um, one of the things I've learned about being online is it's no good trying to be perfect. It's no good trying to fit into a particular model. Um, a lot of people are now tuning into the massive groundswell of, of spiritually minded people. People are opening up uh, more towards heart-based uh, enterprises and many coaches and therapists are working in this way now as well, rather than just life skills or uh, assertiveness training. That's kind of been and gone a little bit. So we're assuming now that um, there's a, a, a much more human, genuine way of relating, and this appeals to me very much so. Um, so it doesn't work for me when people try to sell me stuff. or And I can tell, it's like the smell comes out of the computer. It's like, I know this isn't genuine. When they talk about heart-based thing or spiritual that, it doesn't feel right to me. It's like, it's a buzzword lately. Um, and so I, I've got a very acute intuition and also a sense of... Um, body language signals and so on i'm able to read and see apparently being a scorpion i'm able to read and see what's behind what is apparently just what's on offer but i'm able to see behind that so one of the things i've learned with you george is how just how genuine you are and i've experienced you over i think something like nine years ago i signed up for um your early years of training where you were still in that mode of, of like needing to achieve something and it was a selling program and it was a little bit uh, uncomfortable. We were required also asked or expected to bring more people in and it, it didn't work for you in the end and it didn't work for me either. And um, I've seen just how much you've changed and, and developed and grown and got grounded and based and a, a truly spiritual master in what you teach now. Well, thank you. I very much appreciate that, especially uh, coming from you. You've seen uh, some of my dark past and also you yourself have um, experienced a lot of different types of marketing experts. And uh, so I really appreciate that very much. Um, so what, what, I, what I learned from that is what I know is that, you know, little children model themselves on their parents and we students of these media model ourselves on our trainers, of course. And so now the group that I'm in with you is just amazing. The, the beautiful relationships and connections that people are making. So that's, that's really down to you and encouraging that 
collaboration and mutual support. Mm, so. Thank you. Yeah, and that's one of the, the other uh, discoveries or maybe rediscoveries in your business is the power of connections mm. that have brought you opportunities. So mm. talk about that. What, what, what are you learning in terms, of, in, in terms of connections? I guess networking, some people might call it, but, but for you, it's more of a heart-based uh, or genuine way of, of meeting with people. But tell us about that. Well, I've been quite astonished because, um, you know, I hear the words heart-based and I know um, many of my colleagues in our group with you, George, are very close friends now. We understand and speak that same language and we're all on the same page as I experience. And I could name names, but they know who they are. And, um, and we're welcoming also new people moving in and it, so there's nothing rigid about it. Um, there's no dictatorial mandate, thou shalt be heart-based. Um, but you have always suggested that networking, that finding groups of people with a similar uh, line of work or a similar approach to life or to training and so on. And that, I've never actually managed to get to do that. Um, and um, I'm not quite sure what I want to say about that, but I spontaneously uh, came across a group of, well, at the time when I joined in December, there were 1,200 members on a Facebook group. And it's a group of uh, women over 50. And I'm considerably much more than 50. But um, it appealed to me. It, it grew out of an organization called the Red Tent, which is uh, slightly younger women or women up to the age of 50 or so. Um, this is a group for women over 50 called the Silver Tent. And when I joined, there were 1,200 members. I suggested a few people, and some of our group are also members. Um, and it's mushroomed to over 6,000. And it's, a, it's an extraordinary resource of wisdom and uh, depth and so on. And I've just been enjoying it. And I've been um, interacting with large numbers of the, of the people there. And I've offered a dream fruit, which people show up every week. They just show up. It's free. I could charge for my services there, but at the moment I'm not. Uh, but I notice that people are asking me, and now could it, could I do a one to one session with you? And this is just a this is a bonus for me because I'm only there because I like it, because I'm enjoying it, and because I'm learning a lot from the other people there and from the relationships. And we've had an in person residential weekend retreat with twelve or twelve or so members. Um, I've stayed in a house in France with another of the members. We've got another retreat in a, a couple of weeks' time in France with 11 members doing um, uh, spiritual and shamanic studies. And you know, so it's a very real resource for me. It's, I'm making friends. And in the process, I'm noticing that people are responding to me in a different way, and I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. And so that's what I'm discovering. It really reinforces the, the um, principle that you have of... I'm not selling, I'm inviting. And if people like my invitation, they're gonna approach me. I'm not approaching anybody. Um, I'm not chasing anybody. And that's such a nice feeling. Yes, yes. I love your example on that. That is mm -hmm. extraordinary. And yeah. I do encourage everybody watching this, you know, um, find groups of kindred, kindred spirits uh, that, mm -hmm. that you resonate with, maybe the values of the group, uh, maybe you're at a certain life stage or a certain stage of, de of development in a particular path uh, and show up, uh, be a, I mean, I think of it as uh, some people call this, there's a term servant leadership, but be a part of the community in a way that you feel like serves the greater whole. And almost certainly uh, people will reach out and, you know, Tamar, you're sharing these, this great example here. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's go into part of one small part of your work or maybe a growing part of your work, which is this idea of using our dreams, hmm. uh, in waking life. Yeah. So, you know, you sent me a few notes in advance and I thought it was fascinating. Um, uh -huh. share with the audience what, what, uh, what, what you share with me. Okay. So, um, it seems to me that it's really important that each, individual as far as they're able and have the means to do it uh, uses some time uh, during the day if possible to tune into the inner world um, because in the inner world in your psyche 
there are energies uh, moving around the network uh, which can give you great clues to the direction your life is taking or to things you need might maybe want to look at a little bit further and dreams are a wonderful language and we can learn the language of dreams um, simply by each of us tuning into our own making our own dictionary of, of your dream symbols for example and um, I love to work with dreams and the work that I do with dreams now I we introduce that into my psychotherapy work and group work and my retreats is to do a waking dream work where um, you take a dream you may remember just a fragment of dream um, you may remember a long complicated dream and some people tell me their dreams and it lasts for 20 minutes the telling of it which is great details and ins and outs and ups and downs and all sorts of amazing things of course dreams are not restrained by the everyday reality so you can fly or drown or you know or whatever you need to do in your in your psyche um, and um, and so um, I've been encouraging people to record their dreams uh, to note them down um, and I have on my website some tips about how to remember your dreams but if you have it maybe it could also be a recurring dream sometimes we dream maybe of a house that's similar house and it comes back into our dreams again and again or we can dream of a certain figure in our lives or even somebody that we know um, or beings animals uh, trees there's life in all sorts of ways that will present itself to us in our dreams and to begin to work with those as if they are live and able to communicate with us in the present so the way that i work with a dream is to re-enter a dream um, with the person as if it's happening now so they enter a point of the dream and what just flew into my mind would be um i don't know why but the image of those boys who were stuck in a cave in thailand um and mm. no way out and um, that seemed to me like a dream sort of space and so if I were to imagine that, I hadn't thought of this before, it just came in now, but if I were to think of that as my dream space, um, then I would enter the dream at the point where I am in the depths of the cave and I cannot see a way out. And for me to facilitate um, myself in that dream, I would take that as my starting point where I, I wake up in the dream, it's scary, I'm stuck, um, I can't see a way out, and I know there's dark, cold water in the way of me and the fresh air and uh, so uh, dreams can induce panic um a fear of death often comes in dreams or near-death experiences like you fall off a high building wake up in a fright um and so i would take that as a starting point to explore what's possible uh, in, with the active dream work and it gets to be really quite magical so um i could imagine perhaps a guide comes in the form of a a, a night owl who might come into the cave having flown through the narrow passages of air to bring me a message or to bring me a rope that I could follow or there may be a light that suddenly appears around a corner or maybe even a doorway in the wall of the cave and so it's quite magical what work you can do to understand the, the, the dilemma in and, and, and if you're in a dead end in your life that might be a very appropriate um, symbol and I hadn't, I hadn't thought of it before talking to you just now it just came into my mind as a possible example of way a dream might work you also mentioned um like having a conversation mm. in waking life let's say uh, you know there was a there was a dream last night there was a figure that came in um, yeah. and to and now that we're in waking life uh yeah. to to start a conversation with that that being like, oh absolutely so, um, this is something I learned about the Senoi tribe in Malaysia um, or Indonesia I think it was Malaysia uh, who were a remote tribe and they uh, the children recall their report their dreams to their fathers every morning at breakfast and then the fathers go to the village square and report the dreams to the elders and they all discuss the dreams and then the advice is given on the basis of the dreams there's no crime no murder no robberies no violence in this tribe because they're working with all the forces in their unconscious and the children are taught say say they're being followed by a tiger and they're, they're running away scared from the hunt from the tiger and they do have tigers in their area 
that in the dream, they turn and face the tiger and they say to the tiger, why are you in my dream? What are you bringing me? Or what do you want from me in my dream? And they learn to do that um, if the tiger comes again in a dream. So they're actually practicing lucid dreaming, which is um, being able to, to some degree, be aware that you're dreaming and to open up the dream. But you can do this with waking dream work, which is what I do with, with my clients and also in groups. Um, and you can embody the other who you're talking to as well. So you would speak as the tiger and bring the message that the tiger has, or you know, it could be something uh, that the person is sending is dangerous, or it could be something very exciting or very powerful, or an energy that wants to emerge. It could be that the animal energy in the person's life is not being expressed because it's a death call day. You know, so there are many different levels of understanding dreams, and that's the magic of dreams is there's no one right way to interpret them. And I don't, I don't generally interpret dreams. I offer um, channels for the person to explore. So there are open questions like, what might this person tell you? What might this being be bringing you? What is the gift of them being in your dream right now? What do you want from them? Ask and, and be given what, what is it you want from them. Mm. And because it's a dream and it's magic and you make it happen, it all becomes possible in the waking dream work. That's yes. a lovely thing about it. It's exciting. And mm. people begin to see their lives opening up in ways they hadn't imagined they could. Thank you. That's, that's it's great. also very good for relationships. You know, if you're fearful or, or having trouble in a relationship to actually use that, the, the dreams as a, a way to give you some understanding of what's really going on deep down. Mm. Yeah, mm. And bring it to the surface for your awareness. And it's strengthening. Mm. Thank you. So in the final couple minutes that we have okay. left. Oh gosh, yeah, um, time goes by. Yeah, uh, share with us how uh, people can work with you. Um, uh, you do work in a variety of ways, but I'll, I'll let you share what's, what's coming up. And I know you also have uh, an upcoming online program that maybe you could talk a bit about. I have uh, a number of things. I'm working with the archetypes now, whatever you understand by that, uh, the archetypes are ways to describe those powerful energies that, that come and go in our lives. And um, some of them, for example, when you're a child, you come into the world very trusting. Um, and so you're in, in complete innocence. A newborn baby is completely innocent, unstained, unformulated. Um, and sooner or later, with every child, I think, there's a little bit of a disillusionment, like the Father Christmas doesn't exist, or, you know, mummy and daddy had sex, or um, uh, the child is not um, the favorite in the family. You know, there's always some sort of childhood wound, which then creates a, an inner archetype of the orphan, like the sense of abandonment or betrayal. Um, and we go through different energies in our lives and call them archetypes, like the the, the one that propels to go out and fight some battles, um, the one that becomes a caretaker or an altruist, goes campaigning for a better world. Greenpeace activists are very much to do with the, uh, the caretaker and the altruist and combined with the warrior energy. Um, and then you've got the, the more evolved, a little bit linked to the tarot figures of the tarot, the major figures of the tarot cards, or um, they're just major ener energies in life and not everybody relates to that in the way that i'm describing it but it's um it seems to be applicable and also those energies can come down through the generations so you may have seen your grandfather as a regal figure or as a beggar a poor little old person or um, your grandmother as a tyrant or as a benevolent queen or, so there are many different ways to describe uh, and to perceive the archetypes and experience those energies in our lives and uh, those roles come and go, of course. They're not stuck. They don't stay around for ever. Mm, that's great. And so that's what the online program is going to be. That was what, that's one of my great interests at the moment, I'm exploring the mother and daughter um, dynamic and um, how each of, each of those figures, the mother figure and the daughter figure, relate to each other. And they, re they have their each own journeys and how each of those will eventually... Um, possibly evolve into the high priestess figure or you know this being supremely confident and somebody who's benevolent and generous in the world and, and a kind 
feminine figure. Um, mm. and I think we need a lot of healing of our feminine figures and also for the men in the world who are struggling, many of them, with knowing how to be a man um, in relation to, particularly in relation to women um, now. Um, mm. New energies are coming forth. And I, I could go into a little political diatribe here, but I won't. Um, <laughs> We haven't got time now, but um, that's something that interests me greatly, you know, supporting men, not all about women. It's very much about enabling men to have a, some, several male, male clients who are working in this way too, mm. um, to try and understand and to expand and to grow. And there are many, figure, um, many groups are forming now for men to explore the, being authentic and genuine, kind and generous and and not losing the masculinity, not losing that self-image. Yeah. And for women also to be achieving and, and so on, but also not to lose their feminine, feminine energies. And yeah. their, 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 um, because the masculine energies and the feminine energy, one is receptive and one is active, and they manifest in each person. It's not confined to men and women. But, um, yeah. Well, thank you. I, yeah. pre I hope those who are watching this and are fascinated by this discussion of archetypes or dream work uh, to reach out to Tamara. I will of course have the links below in the notes of the video and thank you Tamara for being here. Uh, oh, it's a great pleasure, George. And just mention my retreats because uh, you yes. Know, uh, yes. 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 We have about a minute. Yes. In beautiful locations. Um, and my, my website will be up uh, on the, on the site, I think. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, George. It's been, yeah. um, a great pleasure and um, lovely always to connect with you. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm.